The point guard position has been completely revolutionized this century. What was once a position that was known for primarily taking a back seat and getting teammates involved has gradually evolved into something completely different. In today's NBA, the position is more versatile than ever, with the top tier being some of the most lethal scorers in the league. A major reason for this evolution was none other than Agent Zero himself, Gilbert Arenas. Instead of following the typical floor general model, Arenas elected to attack first as a scorer. His mindset for this was that since he was the most skilled offensive player on his team, he didn't see the logic in passing up shots of his own to set up for players who weren't on the same level as him. This idea ended up working out as Arenas broke out as a superstar after signing with the Wizards in the mid-2000s. He averaged about 26 points a game from 2004 to 2008 and was LeBron's first true rival after going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in the playoffs three years in a row. While it took a few years to catch on, the rest of the league eventually realized that having a score-first point guard can do wonders for a team's offense. This began to crack the foundation of a pure point guard and has led to players like Steph, Damon, Kyrie dominating the league as the best at their position even though playmaking isn't their primary skill. Even in his post-playing days, Agent Zero is still challenging the validity of pure point guards and has a shocking theory about why they don't work. If, you're, if your point guard is the dominant player, mm -hmm. but he's a passer, averaging 10, 15, your team is not winning. It, it, it's not possible because you don't have a dominant guy that he has to pass the ball to because he's creating every play. Today's game, the last 28 years, your pure point is basically irrelevant if you're trying to win a championship. Man, now you got to lose. Basically, he's saying that it's impossible to win a championship in today's NBA if the best player on your team is a point guard who is primarily a playmaker. Without a doubt a bold statement, it's surprisingly been proven true time and time again. In the last 30 seasons that Arenas is referring to, there have been a handful of pure point guards that have made serious noise in the playoffs as the best player on their team. Let's take a look at the best. The first is Jason Kidd. After being traded to the 26-win Nets during the 2001 offseason, Kidd completely turned the franchise around. He finished second in MVP voting in 2002 and led New Jersey all the way to the finals where they would ultimately get swept by a Shaq and Kobe duo at their best. Next season, the Nets got hot at the right time and went on a 10-game winning streak in the playoffs to get back to the finals. But once again, they would come up short, losing to the Spurs in six games. During his finals appearances, Kidd did all that he could with what he had, but he couldn't get the Nets over the hump to win a championship. Next is Steve Nash, the two-time MVP who spearheaded the fast-paced three-point heavy offense that became the norm in today's NBA. After signing back with Phoenix prior to the 2005 NBA season, the Suns didn't have many expectations around the league as they only won 29 games the year before. But Nash tore the league apart once he arrived in Phoenix. Playing at a breakneck pace while being surrounded by knockdown shooters for him to feed led to Nash winning back-to-back -back MVPs in 2005 and 6. From 2005 to 2012, the Suns made the conference finals three times, coming up short in all of them. Nash elevated his game each appearance, posting better numbers than his MVP seasons. But like we saw with Kidd, it wasn't enough to get his team over the hump. The third pure point to look at is Rajon Rondo. After winning the championship playing a supporting role in 2008, Rondo gradually became the Celtics' best player and extended their championship window much longer than originally expected. During his peak from 2009 to 2012, Rondo put up amazing numbers in the playoffs and came one win away from the NBA championship in 2010, losing to the Lakers in seven. He also pushed the Miami Heat to game seven in the conference finals in 2012 and played at such a high level that Jeff Van Gundy had this to say about him. You're not going to see an NBA player ever play much better than what you've seen tonight. Once again, despite stellar numbers, Rondo couldn't bring the Celtics banner 18 as the best player on the roster. The final and most recent point guard is Chris Paul, who just came off the deepest playoff run of his career. After proving he had plenty left in the tank by leading the underdog Thunder to the playoffs, Chris Paul was traded to the Suns prior to last season, where they were projected to maybe make the playoffs. Of course, this wasn't the case. The Suns exceeded expectations and finished as the two seed in the West, and even made their first finals appearance since 1993. Overall, looking at him here is tricky because even though his stats may not be as impressive as Devin Booker, many looked at Paul as the best player on the team considering they turned into an overnight contender once he arrived in Phoenix. During his 2021 campaign, he finished 5th in MVP voting, made the All-NBA second team, and was even selected as an All-Star before Booker. And as you probably know, CP3 and the Suns came up short in the finals, losing out to Giannis and the Bucks in six games. After looking at all four of these players' situations, their accomplishments, and their end results, each one of their teams followed a similar trend. All four of them were given keys to an organization without lofty expectations, and they ended up wildly overachieving. Despite their success, none of them could come away with an NBA championship, which ultimately proves that Gilbert Arenas is right about pure point guards. Am I saying that pass-first point guards are useless in the modern NBA? Definitely not. These four players that we looked at show that if you want to instantly make your team more competitive, 
then building around a player of this type is a great option. They are great floor raisers, especially with limited talent around them. However, if a team has a championship or bust mentality, relying solely on a pure point guard can be a trap in a sense because they're going to make your team seem better than they really are. But this doesn't mean that a pure point guard can't win at the highest level. Both Jason Kidd, Rondo, and most recently Kyle Lowry played key supporting roles on the championship teams. Basically, in the right situation, leaning on a pure point guard can do wonders for your team. But if they are the focal point on a contender, your chances of winning a championship are slim to none. Looking into the future, LaMelo Ball and John Morant seem to be next up when it comes to the best traditional point guards in the game. Just like the examples we looked at before, both players are the cornerstones of rebuilding organizations that are going to try to put the pieces around them to be competitive for years to come. Both players have unselfish mentalities, great athleticism, and elite court vision, which are intangibles to have great long-term success as floor generals. The biggest issue is the markets that they play in. Since LaMelo plays in Charlotte and Morant is in Memphis, it's highly unlikely that either of these teams will ever land a marquee free agent. This means that both of them are going to have to figure out ways to be the best players on their team as they try to become contenders. Do I think they can do it? Maybe. Assuming these two are going to develop into perennial all-stars, their games are going to have to steer away from the pure point gun role they're accustomed to playing and shift more towards the play style of Trey Young, who can dominate both as a scorer and a facilitator. While he is for sure a gifted passer, Trey quickly figured out that he has to put himself before his teammates if he wants to have any real chance at success in the playoffs. Basically, if Lamelo and Morant want any hope of winning a championship with the teams they're on now, they're going to have to develop into players who score 25 points a night and use their playmaking to complement their scoring. Because if they don't, they'll be the next stars to fall victim to Hibachi's theory. What do you guys think of Gilbert Arenas' theory? Is he a basketball genius or is it all just a reach? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.